Welcome everybody out there here to, to our next webinar at JFT Bank. A warm welcome in the name of JFT Bank as well. Yeah, today we have the 23rd of May 2019. And my name, as always, for those kind of webinars, Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski. Uh, you know, I have a really complicated last, last name. So whenever you get in touch with me, just call me Stefan. That's uh, fair enough. And you see already my email address. If you have further questions, maybe interest in further upcoming Excel sheets, um, yeah. Don't hesitate um, to send me an email. Uh, just drop me a note uh, and you see the email address s.friedrichowski at jftbank.com. And um, if you have any spelling error in the first part, that doesn't matter. It will reach me definitely uh, thanks to the support of uh, JFT Bank. Today's topic, topic is top, uh, <laughs> stock picking a quite simple trading strategy. And it's finally you will realize it's really easy so we have already introduced two different kind of um, stock trading strategies one has been about pullback um, as an entry uh, signal and the other one has been days since high uh, both you will find on the youtube channel of uh, jfd bank uh, no problem so you just have to go down the list and then you will have access to all those older recordings as well so um that's uh, another chance to have uh, everything uh, up to date and uh, free for you anytime same is true for all the recordings of today you will find them latest tomorrow um, once again on the same youtube channel what else i have always to mention uh, when we start you if you like you can already download uh, the slides of today just uh, following the go to webinar control panel and uh, then you can download the slides unfortunately the excel sheets i cannot upload because that kind of format uh, is not allowed on that go to webinar but uh, i can send you an email uh, with those sheets if you like if it comes to stock trading it's always good to know what we are doing as for any trading strategy and today we will start a little bit with uh, stocks in general and we will talk about uh, indices and performance indices and price indices something like that and finally we will um, come up with a stock picking strategy that uh, you will see later the other thing I have always to mention, you know the procedure, uh, I have to show up the risk disclaimer, uh, and of course I will do so. Uh, we talk here during the webinar about trading, we talk about investment, we talk about trading strategies, but nevertheless, finally, when you open trades, everything you do is on your own responsibility, so it's just your own trades. I think that's more or less self-explaining, but it has to be mentioned uh, at least once during a webinar. Um, you may uh, see me smiling, or at least it's, um, it sounds like I'm smiling, um, but you you know the procedure. So in more detail, there are general advantages of stock trading, and that's really good to know what are the real advantages of stock trading. So that will be the start part, um, and uh, I think I do it always when I talk about stock trading because it's really important to have that in mind. If we talk about stock trading, we need always a benchmark, um, a benchmark for our trading strategies. And those benchmark, yeah, quite easy. We go for the underlying indices. For for example, if you talk about German um, stock companies, yeah, then the best would be we compare our final result with the DAX. And if you talk about S&P 100, that will be the other example of today, uh, and later for stock picking as well, we would compare it to the S&P 100. But now there's some problem. Let's call it a problem. Because the original DAX is not a price index, it's a performance index. And in general, DAX should outperform anything any other uh, indices, index. There are two things. We have to 
keep in mind what's the difference between performance and price index. And the other uh, thing we will learn is that the DAX is not outperforming all the others, but later. But it's good to know the differences. Maybe that's something you know already, uh, okay, but um, I will introduce a concept of performance and price index as well. If we talk about those indices, then there's already a first idea for a stock trading strategy. You know that normally those indices are weighted um, according to market capitalization. So market cap is, um, is telling you how much weight an individual company um, has within that index. For example, um, in the German DAX, uh, if you think about uh, Siemens, uh, for example, or SAP, those are the big uh, companies within the DAX and they have accordingly a higher weight than smaller companies like uh, ThyssenKrupp or Commerzbank or something like that. But now if you think about such an index, we may go for an equal weight index. So we, we can take the 30 DAX companies and just investing in those companies but with equal weight. That means we just we do not have the uh, same like DAX price index and maybe we have already an advantage and you will see we have so it's good to know um, and finally of course as the title of the webinar stock picking and how to do that kind of picking so we don't have to be invested in all the 30 companies of the DAX or in all the 100 companies of the S&P 100. Maybe one remark why I go for S&P 100 instead of S&P 500, simply because uh, 100 companies uh, for that selection procedure is already enough. Uh, so that's, that's everything about that. Um, and the other thing, and finally, I will compare it with the S&P 500, unfortunately, because I don't find a good data source for the S&P 100 index. Anyhow, we will see we can outperform those indices by far, just by a good select, uh, selection procedure. And it's really simple uh, how to do that. But why in general, is stock trading an advantage in any portfolio? And my thinking is always about uh, wealth management or investment in general, that we need always a combination in our overall portfolio. One part might be our forex trades, CFD trades and indices or commodities. That's one part, but it should be not everything. Maybe the other part should be um, stocks just real stocks and another part maybe physical gold or whatever you have in mind so that in general creates the overall portfolio but why stock trading the good thing about stock trading we trade something with an intrinsic value because finally if you buy a share of a company then there's a portion of that company which now belongs to me. So there's a portion of any chair, of any machine, any um, patent, everything which belongs to the company, part of that now belongs to me. So there's an intrinsic value behind. So that's totally different than if I buy one lot uh, long long trade euro us dollar there's nothing in my hands and i even cannot put it in my hands a company has an intrinsic value and a share is a part of that company so that is really something different the other good thing is a couple of companies are paying dividends so we get some extra earnings just because we have that share so dividends for me personally, always come on top. I will not incorporate uh, the dividend payments in any strategy. I will take that just uh, as an extra. So that comes on top. The next good thing is 
that compared to um, CFD trading or Forex trading, we do not have any swap costs, so no financing costs. Um, okay, sometimes you may have trades with positive swaps, like for example, as we speak, um, short trades on Euro, US dollar, every night you get some money. Um, but most of the um, CFDs that you have to pay swap costs. So the longer the trade, the harder to get a profitable trade. Since we have a real share of that company, um, there are no swap costs. On the other hand, if I buy one Apple share for, I don't know exactly the value, let's say $150, my my personal account gets down by $150. So um, to some extent, the money is gone, but still I have the chair. And the other thing is, of course, we do not have any leverage like uh, Forex trading, CFD trading. The last good thing for the one or the other may be that you can participate at annual meetings. So that might be of interest for the one or the other. But the strongest argument for stock trading is different. Stocks have a long bias, so that means the we have a, an, an intrinsic probability advantage for any stock company. Of course, I know that we have stock companies which go south, finally, like Deutsche Bank in, within the DAX, I think since 10 years they go south. Um, but in general, stock companies have a clear upwards trend. And why? Okay, the simple reason is um, if they don't go north, finally, they will be gone. So they, 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 they need to go north. They And our overall economic system is based on growth. If you don't show up growth, then you are out of the game. So final argument about that, look for example for Warren Buffett. He is exactly using that long bias. Since 30 or 40 years he's now investing in stock companies and look what has happened uh, to him. Quite a good success story. Finally, there's another argument, at least here at uh, JFT Brokers, because uh, we have definitely um, extremely good conditions for stock trading, and uh, that's just commission zero. Hey, you may think, how is that possible? It is at JFT Bank. If I would go to my regular bank account, I think I have to pay for a round turn about 10 euros, something like that. Uh, and at JFD, nothing. So there are not um, no commissions involved. So whenever you buy stock, sell stock, no commission to pay. And you can do it directly out of the MT5 platform uh, as you do any other trade uh, as usual for, for example, for Forex. So it's really easy and it's quite convenient and no costs. So that's really good. Um, so that's about the overall advantage of stock trading. But now I mentioned already we need a benchmark. And if you go for a benchmark, of course, uh, and we talk about DAX companies, then we should go for the DAX index as uh, a reasonable uh, benchmark. But now we have to realize that especially for the DAX, there's something strange. We have to think about the difference between performance and price index. And whenever we talk about the normal DAX, then this is a so-called performance index. But what is the difference between a price index and a performance index? The short answer is really easy, the dividends. So what happens? Normally, the dividends are taken out of any calculation of any index, not for the DAX. Finally, what happens within the DAX, all the dividends, all the payments of dividends are reinvested in that company. So that's totally different from, from any other index like S&P 500, Eurostox, Dow Jones, Kakarot, you name it. So all those are so-called price indices. 
The only one I know, which is different, is the DAX. And this one is a performance index. And within that index, the dividends are reinvested. That finally should mean that the DAX should outperform all the other price indices. Because, yeah, it, it, it's using uh, some reinvestment mechanism and all the other just take out the dividends uh, to, yeah, to their wallets, but not back into the index. So the real comparable DAX is the DAX price index. So if we want to compare the performance of, for example, Germany compared to United States, then we have to compare the DAX price index to, for example, Dow Jones, S&P 500 or whatever. So that's really something you have to keep in mind whenever you talk about um, comparing indices. And let's have a look of uh, about that that real difference between those um, two things, DAX performance and DAX price index. Let's start with that. And within my Excel sheet, I have a long list of data from starting at 2001. And in red, we have the well-known DAX performance index. So that's exactly what normally uh, is the DAX whenever we talk about the DAX. Uh, starting at 6,000, 6, uh, nearly up to 14,000 as we speak, about 12,000. That's what you normally get in any chart. In blue, we have the DAX price index. Uh, oh, that's in German. Kurs means price. Uh, that's from yesterday's uh, German webinar about the same topic. So that's now in blue. So starting a little bit lower, so uh, we will do it uh, in a minute, um, normalized, but uh, you can already easily realize that there's a huge difference between the DAX price index in blue and the DAX um, performance index, the normal DAX in Red. Okay, let's let's do it a little bit better. If, if we normalize it uh, to the very beginning, uh, so that is set to 100, and then we can really do um, the calculation um, directly with our eyes, more or less. So starting at 2001 until now, the DAX performance index has nearly doubled, and the DAX price index, <clears throat> more or less nothing. So that means investing in the DAX means since ne nearly 20 years uh, that uh, we have no growth. Hmm. Poor picture for uh, poor picture for uh, Germany. Let's have a comparison to the S and P 500, and. Let's do it here within the chart, um, just a second. And now here we have it. And I have normalized the S&P 500 as well. Um, and that is now in yellow. And now you can see, because what do we have to compare? Yellow with blue, not yellow with red, because we have to compare price index with price index. So DAX is down here in blue and S&P 500 in yellow. And now you can clearly realize the outperformance of the of United States compared to the DAX. And as far as I know, all the other um, uh, European um, indices like Euro stocks or even other single countries, uh, Kakaron, for example, FTSE uh, from United Kingdom, um, no, none of them can can show up the same performance than the United States. Okay, there's one remark I have to make um, because I'm comparing now dollar with euro because the S&P 500 S&P 500 is more or less a dollar value, and the DAX, of course, is a euro value. But that doesn't change the overall picture that much. Um, right now, we have um, an exchange rate of about 1.15. And at the very beginning here, we have had 0 0.5, uh, 0.95 about, so close to parity. So that doesn't explain uh, 
that huge difference. So only the DAX performance with reinvesting of all the dividend payments, uh, okay, can more or less live up with the United States, but not in total. But this is a real and fair comparison between United States and Germany. So you can clearly realize the outperformance of um, United States here. I have to admit, unfortunately, but it is as it is. So bottom line, keep in mind when it comes to indices that you all do, you, that you do everything uh, fair. That means go for the price index and not for the normal DAX. Okay, that lesson is learned. But now let's start the next part um, before we finally end up in stock picking. The next part is maybe there's an interesting idea that we do an equal weight index. What does it mean? So normally within any um, index, all the companies are weighted according to the market capitalization. capitalization or in short, just market cap. So that market cap means yeah, big companies play a bigger role within that index and small companies a smaller role. So the big and expensive companies, they dominate the index. And maybe those big companies do not have the same performance than some smart, smaller companies and showing up much better results. So it might be that the big ones, yeah, they they um, do not show up that growth. And finally, the index as well. Let's have a view on, on the DAX. Uh, I know that the, 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 in principle, the web page here is in German, but uh, um, it, uh, you can easily realize what I'm showing you. So index gewicht means uh, that's the weighting within the uh, DAX. And so you see the different numbers for the different companies, ThyssenKrupp, Bayerstor, Wirecard, and so on. And you see, finally, SAP with a little bit more than 10%. So they are really leading the DAX was 10% and the smallest one is uh, close uh, below 1%. So ThyssenKrupp, and now think about, um, maybe ThyssenKrupp is not the best example, but they are doing a wonderful job and they show up gross, gross, gross. And the price for the company will go north, north, north. Hmm. That will not have a big impact on the DAX index because they are totally underweighted. And on the other hand, companies like SAP, Linde, Allianz, Siemens, big companies, they will more or less never show up with a real big growth in their price value. So, of course, from time to time. And there are some examples of big companies showing good growth as well, like uh, it's now United States companies like Apple or Microsoft or Google. Uh, but in principle, those smaller, maybe smarter companies, um, they may should lead the index. What we now do is we simply go for equal weight. That means, okay, let's do an example for the DAX. Um, let's say I have 100,000 um, euros and the DAX contains or um, sorry, companies or it's built up by 30 companies. That means now what I do is I invest one um, divided by 30, which means 3,333 euros per any company. So I take the, that money and now I go through the list of the 30 DAX companies, let's say starting with Adidas and um, I go for that uh, amount of money. I want to invest in Adidas uh, divided by the price of uh, Adidas. I think that's something from a couple of days ago. That would be 12.93. So uh, since I cannot buy a portions of shares, so I will buy 12 shares of that company. And then I go through the complete list. Doing so, I have an equal weight DAX. Nice. But now I have to do something. From time to time, 
I have to recalculate. Um, because maybe one company, uh, just because of different prices. Um, I mean, uh, one company, the price might go up and for another company, the price might go down. That means for the one which goes down, I need some extra shares. The other one, I have to sell shares. So you know what I mean. What I now do is I do that kind of calculation every 44 trading days, which is around about two months. So every two months I do that update. And of course, if I have uh, now additional money, since I clear my, my account totally at that process, um, after the first round, I might have 101,000 uh, euro. Uh, of course, I take that 101 and do that um, procedure of, of uh, reallocation once again. Let's have a view on what finally results if we do that update process every 44 days with our equal weight, so to say, index. But nevertheless, still, we don't buy the index. We What we buy um, are, is real shares. So we, we are already within the game of physical stock trading. Um, as a result, let's start with the DAX and uh, according to that procedure. And that is my equity versus time if I do exactly what I have mentioned. For comparison, of course, I have to use the DAX price index, not the DAX um, performance index. But even that one, I would outperform again. The blue line is that equal weight stock trading. Okay, looks good. Outperforming quite well. Let's go for numbers. I have to uh, switch a little bit here to the right because the numbers are always behind my go-to webinar control panel. Okay, the DAX price index um, has an annual growth of 0.83. I hope it will stop in a second. No, it stopped. Um, 0.83% annual growth, <laughs> uh, funny number. And the strategy, meaning the equal weight, has an annual growth of close to 5%. Okay, it's a, it's not uh, a huge amount of, of growth, but already more than the index itself, which is already an outperforming um, strategy. And 5%? At least 5%. But it comes better. We know already that the uh, US companies are performing better than um, the German companies. So let's do the same procedure for uh, S&P 100. And still, I have to admit that I compared with the S&P 500 because I don't have a good data source for, for that. First, I have to, to, um, to mention um, that now my y-axis is a logarithmic uh, scale. Uh, you see the, the numbers. Otherwise, I would uh, have a purely exponential function here. So what we have here is a real outperformance. So you see the comparison between my equal weight stock trading strategy and the S&P 500. Wow. That is outperformance. Let's go for the numbers. Um, so once again, I have to shift to the right here and then you can see the numbers. And now, okay, the S&P 500 has an annual growth of 7%. Um, over, uh, now I have data for about um, 30, 30 years, yeah, starting at uh, about 1990. And the strategy equal weight, wow already close to 16% annual growth, just by stock trading. Um, I know that not that many traders have an annual growth of 16% in other kind of markets. So um, that's already quite a good performing strategy. So going for United States companies, going for the 100 S&P 100 stock companies and doing that equal weight procedure, yields to exactly that kind of performance. So the update process is done, in this case, every 44 days. 
honestly, I have to take any number. But I know that or I have done the experiment. If I go for other numbers, like doing the procedure every 30 days or 20 days or 60 days, yes, performance will change, but not dramatically. So every two months, that would be an easy job. I mean, thinking about that practically, it means I have to do something every two months. Well, that's easy. I can do that. So that is just equal weight. And we see already the outperforming performance against the DAX and the much more outperformance uh, against the S&P uh, 500. So that's looking like a good story. But it comes even better. Because now, within that kind of strategy, we are always invested in all companies which create that index. When it comes now to stock picking, of course, we are not forced to be invested in all companies. I mean, nobody forces us. We have a certain amount of money, and what we now try to do is to pick the good ones, those which are really good for future performance. So exactly what you may do and may think about if you sit at your table and think, okay, I have 10K euro and which companies I should invest in real stocks. Maybe you start with looking to the balance sheet of those uh, companies or maybe in profit and loss statements, whatever you do. You, you may look to the markets they are in. You may look into their um, performance of last year, 10 years ago, you name it. Everything is good and uh, nothing against those kind of uh, selection procedures. But finally they are not mathematically i mean um, there's still your own judgment that is a good company or a bad company or it might even be more difficult because there might be companies you like for whatever reason maybe uh, you drive as a car or you want to drive a porsche uh, then you might be interested in that company or in tesla i don't know or you like Apple or you hate Apple, uh, then you might buy Apple or uh, you don't buy Apple. So there's always something like an opinion uh, within that procedure. And you know me, I'm not the man of opinions. I want to have mathematical criteria in order to do that selection procedure. And here I do something straight and easy and simple. I just use indicators. I Originally, I, I took three indicators, and the list in, for, for the complete investigation has been a little bit longer, but not much. Um, I took three indicators, just as an example. One indicator I could take for that selection procedure is a regression, or better to say a regression line. You know what you do? It's like in Excel. You you go for the last uh, for the for your data for the last 100 points and uh, then you do a regression line within those points and then you get a slope okay let's go for that slope as an indicator uh, and then we calculate that slope in percentage uh, then we can compare different companies quite easy and then we can do a ranking same we might do with slope EMA, that's the name I give exactly that, a kind of indicator. EMA, we know, the EMA itself doesn't help us here within that analysis, but the slope of the EMA, hey, if, if we have a high slope, hmm, it means high growth of the value. Good. So let's go for that indicator as well as a one uh, other possibility. So an EMA was a period X, and then we calculate the slope. That's quite easy once again. Or finally, the maybe easiest one of all is just the momentum. Or in the MT4 language, it would be called um, weight of change. So what we do here is we take X days, let's say 100, and we look back 100 days, look for the price, 100 days ago, look for today, 
calculate the difference and divide by the current price. So then we have the percentage change. It's really an easy one. And then we do a ranking procedure, which I will show in the next slide. Finally, when we do trades according to that kind of strategy, we will not place a stop loss. Okay, that's in principle, you know me. Um, typically, I'm always placing stop losses for any trade, but for stock trading, that's acceptable because there's always a limited risk. Uh, finally, the price of a uh, stock company might go to zero. Okay, then I lose uh, everything related to that company, but it's different than uh, Forex or CFD trading. So I can live with that statement, no stop loss for those kind of trades. Practically, what we are doing is the following. At a certain day, we, we do our analysis. That means we go for one of those indicators, in which indicator would be the best, I will, of course, tell you uh, in a minute. And at that specific day, we do that ranking. So the one with the highest slope comes on top, second highest slope, second, and so on and so forth. Just a ranking procedure. And that kind of procedure we do after the trading hour. So when in, in Germany, let's say after 6, uh, 6 p.m., we do the analysis. And at the open of the next day, we close all open positions we have. Finally, we might do it a little bit better than I do here, but for calculation purposes, it's easier, or it has been easier for me to close all open positions. And then we buy those which are heading the ranking list. That's all. So we introduce another number here, um, the maximum number we will buy. And in total, okay, in principle, we could buy all the one, but maybe we say, no, only the top five or the top ten. I will come to that number as well. That's all. And we will invest in exactly those, let's say, 10 companies. We take our money, distribute to the 10, um, to one tenth of the original value, and then buy accordingly the number of stocks for those companies. So internally, we do an equal weight between those um, 10 companies, but that's all. It's just that ranking list. A number of companies we will invest, so the top five, top three, top ten. And then the next the step is just easy. After Y days, we will repeat everything. Similar than we did as um, for the equal weight index. So that's really quite easy. So our job would be, if uh, Y would be still two months, Every two months doing that ranking, uh, and doing that reallocation procedure, and that's all. Before you see the, the final results of that, uh, let's uh, look to the trading strategy, strategy a little bit more from a mathematical point of view. Uh, you know those X, Y, Z uh, are degrees of freedom, because in principle, I don't have ad hoc any number for those values. So, for example, we have a period for our EMA or our regression line or the momentum. So we have a period. It's a degree of freedom. Then I mentioned I do that update process after hmm, Y days. So the next degree of freedom. In principle, I might do it every day or um, I wait one year. So there's no ad hoc value for that number as well. And finally, of course, we have a maximum number of companies we want to be invested in. Uh, 10, 12, 30, I don't know. So that's a de de degree of freedom once again. There might be even another one. Think about our indicators. And let's think about an extremely bearish environment. Looking for the 30 companies within the DAX and all go south. So all the slopes are negative. Of course, if we say we put a threshold additionally here, uh, and that threshold, for example, might be simple zero, it would mean hmm, if all the slopes are negative, we would not invest 
in any company because no no company is fulfilling our criteria. So in principle, yes, that's possible. Or maybe there are two companies um, still remaining, then we go for those two. So in principle, we can use such a threshold additionally. Um, for the investigation I have uh, executed here, I just use uh, two values, minus 100, which means I don't care. Um, if I go for the top five, I would even go for the five with a minus. Um, if the top have still a minus slope. Or the other value I used is a simple zero. So I would only invest in those which are finally uh, at least showing up a positive slope, for example, or positive momentum. Later it will turn out, let's go for, we, we go for all, so the minus 100. Uh, and we have the only limitation would be the maximum number of companies we will be invested in. And let's look for results. And uh, here we are. Let's start with the ducks. Um, and what I show you here is already the one with with the overall best performance. And um, that means I have investigated, of course, uh, within that space of X, Y, Z, a lot of numbers. But finally, I choose those which are really robust, really stable, with a huge neighborhood, uh, which are still profitable. So going for an EMA of, of 200, in this case, for this strategy, means the 250 must be positive as well. And the 150 must be positive as well. If I go for an update, uh, pr procedure of uh, every 40 days, 50 days should work as well, 30 days as well. So that's what I always call robustness of a strategy. And um, of course, I have done that kind of investigation and those are the final results. And you may uh, remember um, the annual growth values. And now we can double it once again. So now we have with the DAX companies and those parameters, which I will summarize in a second. I have a, um, an extra slide for that. I have an annual growth of 10%. So we can double the equal weight and we can outperform the underlying index by far. You remember the growth has been only 0.83% for uh, that um, strategy. So. That kind of stock picking, in this case, with a regression line of a period of a little bit more than 300, and we do that update procedure every uh, three months, and we will invest maximum in seven companies. That's the performance we get. And even the maximum drawdown is smaller than the index. So you see, if we just follow the price index, the maximum drawdown has been 65% and for the strategy, um, a little bit lower. I know still there are high numbers uh, in terms of drawdown, but that belongs to stock trading as well. From time to time, we have to wait in order to recover. You see here, uh, we have to wait three years and three years here once again. That is stock trading. So it's a long-term investment and it's not uh, getting those uh, that uh, yield uh, within a month or two months. But annual growth nevertheless was 10%. I think not a, a bad number. And I think you expect higher values uh, if you go for United States companies. And of course, we will have higher values. Once again, I have to change the scale to um, a lower scale because otherwise I would purely have an exponential function here. Um, now it turned out it's the best is to go for slope EMA uh, period, a little bit less than 300. But I can tell you the, the complete space of parameters, uh, more or less everything works. So it's not really depending on those parameters. Uh, it's always yeah, what I call plateaus in the parameter space. So it's not really depending on those parameters and we can get very good results uh, with that kind of strategy. In this case, 
EMA value close to 300, uh, close to two months we do the update procedure. And we only invest in five companies, which is good uh, because then we don't need such a big portfolio of 100K account. Um, even a 5K account would be good enough for that. And the annual growth we can achieve with that kind of strategy is exceeding already 30%. Oops. Okay, so we can really earn money with stock trading by picking the right ones. And that picking is really easy. It's just looking for the slope of the EMA of uh, the 100 underlyings and go for the top five performer within that list. That's a quite short description of any trading strategy. And it works. So why does it work that well? In principle, one reason is the long bias. The other one is out of, in this case, 100 companies, we always go for the strongest five. Naming those strongest five means, in this case, they have the highest slope within the price um, versus time. That's all. That's all for about for this kind of strategy and we get already an annual growth of uh, a little bit more than 30 percent let me summarize the values um, for that kind of strategy it's quite easy um, so for ducks we would use regression as the best indicator for s p 100 the slope ema period in both cases close to 300 and the update okay one it's every two months, the other every three months. Uh, for the DAX, we go for max symbols being invested in, uh, seven symbols, and the other one was five. No threshold. So even if we have negative slopes or negative regression slopes, we would go into those companies and just see their annual growth as well. So that's all. That's stock picking, quite easy. And since I have done the investigation in the complete parameter space, I know that it's extremely robust against any parameter variation. So going for other uh, values like 350 or 250 uh, doesn't change the overall picture. Or if you want to have some more symbols, once again, doesn't change the picture. And the good thing as well, and the dividends we get on top. So um, even that we will have. So not being incorporated in any calculation within that webinar. So those we will get on top. So that's a quite cool story. And let me summarize. Um, because we, we have had different topics, not only stock picking uh, strategy. We started with the overall advantage of uh, stock trading at all. And we found out that the DAX is really an exotic index. Uh, when it comes to any other, like S&P 500 or Euro stocks or uh, Kakarot. Um, so we know that uh, there's another index, which is called the price index, even that you can find for the DAX as well. This one is really comparable to any other index. Looking for that, we will realize, or we have realized, that uh, Germany is really underperforming against the United States, for example, unfortunately. But it is as it is. And the next thing we found out has been that if we do a new DAX, like an equal weight DAX, so we, we do a reallocation within that index and follow all those stock companies within that index, it's already pro more profitable than the index itself. The reason are the big ones, which are not that outperforming, the small ones, they have a tendency for outperformance. And if we do an equal weight, Hmm. then those are better represented within our equal weight index than in the original index. Finally, if you go for a stock picking procedure with a mathematical um, indicator like regression line or EMA slope, then we can even get more performance out of stock trading. And finally, with uh, yeah, S&P 100 going for that, uh, doing that kind of stock picking procedure, we are above 30% annual growth. So mm, that's a good number. So that's uh, more than most of the standard uh, trading strategies uh, can achieve. So it's good to have that as an additional investment, maybe.
at least I will go for that. Uh, definitely. Oh, <laughs> my last line here is in German once again. So slides, Excel sheets, or my contact, uh, you can see here uh, if you have interest in those Excel sheets. Unfortunately, you, you cannot do the recalculation within that Excel sheet, uh, just a list of trades and uh, getting um, those equity lines. The, the procedure behind is much more complicated and complex because uh, yeah, I have to manage uh, all, uh, for example, the 100 price histories of all the companies doing the calculation. So that doesn't really fit into an Excel sheet. Uh, but uh, of course, I can do that with my uh, C and now it's a C++ uh, computer code. But anyhow, uh, if you like those sheets, uh, I will, can send you uh, those sheets if you on the other hand send me an email uh, if you drop me a note at s friedrichowski at jftbank.com that's for today and uh, hopefully you enjoyed enjoyed the webinar and uh, that i can see you again next month i'm not sure what i will talk about there um let's see um it might have to do with edges indicators well that's a good idea let's go for that I wish you a good evening, of course, and enjoy your time. Bye-bye.